Hello friends, and welcome to my channel. Interrupts, are events detected by the MCU, which cause normal program flow to be preempted. Interrupts pause the current program and transfer control, to a specified user and firmware routine, called the Interrupt Service Routine, ISR. The ISR process is the interrupt event, then resumes normal program flow. Timers and counters are a very useful. As the name implies, timers indicate when an amount of time has elapsed. Timers can also count using the same internal registers. The difference between a timer and a counter, is the source of the pulse that increments the counting register. If the source is time-based, such as the oscillator clock that runs the microcontroller, then it is a timer. If the source is a pulse from a sensor or switch, then it is a counter. Interrupts can be generated by various internal or external hardware events. These are the devices, that can be set up to generate an interrupt in our MCU. The most effective way of integrating timer operations into an application program, is by using a timer interrupt. This program shows a sequence, where a timer is run to generate an output pulse interval. An interrupt routine has been written, and assigned to the timer interrupt. The timer is set up during program initialization, and started by preloading or clearing it. The main program and timer count then proceed concurrently, until a timeout occurs and the interrupt is generated. The main program is suspended, and the ISR executed. When finished, the main program is resumed at the original point. If the ISR contains a statement to toggle an output bit, a square wave could be obtained, with a period of twice the timer delay. The CCSC compiler provides a number of functions that implement the PIC interrupt system. These are the interrupt sources available in the PIC 16F877. These predefined labels, must be used when enabling individual interrupts, and declaring the ISR block. They are defined in the header file, along with the initialization codes for the interrupt control registers. This program, demonstrates the basic interrupt setup. An output count represents the primary task. This is interrupted by the switch input at RB0 going low, forcing the execution of the interrupt service routine, which causes all the output LEDs to come on for 2 seconds. The original task, is then automatically resumed at the point where it was interrupted. It is designed to run on the hardware shown in this schematic. Most microcontrollers provide hardware binary counters, that allow a time interval measurement, or count to be carried out separately from program execution. The PIC 16F877 has three hardware timers built in, Timer 0, Timer 1, and Timer 2. The principal mode of operation of these registers are, as counters for external events or timers using the internal clock. Additional registers are used to provide capture, compare and pulse width modulation modes. The CCS timer function set is shown in this table. The counters are more frequently used as timers, with the input derived from the MCU clock oscillator. Since the clock period is accurately known, the count represents an accurate timed period. It can therefore be used to measure the period or frequency of an input signal, or internal intervals or generate a regular interrupt. Many PIC MCUs incorporate one or more capture, compare, and PWM, CCP, modules that use the timer registers. In PWM mode, a CCP module can be used to generate a timed output signal. 
This provides an output pulse waveform with an adjustable high period. The high output state, called the duty cycle, is expressed as a percentage of the overall period of the pulse wave. This program shows the basic setup procedure. The setup CCP1 function selects the mode of operation of the CCP module. The function setup timer 2 controls the overall period of the PWM wave and has three arguments. The first sets the timer prescale division ratio, 16 in this case. The prescaler is an additional counter stage that reduces the input clock rate by the selected ratio of 1, 4, or 16. The second argument gives the overall output period from 1 to 255 times the input clock period. The last value is the postscalar setting, from 1 to 16, which divides the output from the MSB before it is fed, to the interrupt system, so that the interrupt period can be adjusted, to be a multiple of the timer output. The duty cycle is set via the set PWM1 duty function call. The value given is in the range 1 to 1023, an initial value for a 10-bit counter. The value 500 gives a ratio of about 50%. The PWM wave is generated continuously, after the setup is completed. The values for duty cycle of 500 and overall period of 248 used in this demo, produce an output at CCP1 of 250 Hz, and a signal ratio of 50% with a 4 MHz MCU clock. The compare mode uses the timer in the inverse manner to compare. The CCP pin is set to input and monitored for a change of state. When a rising or falling edge is detected, the timer register is cleared to zero and starts counting at the internal clock rate. When the next active edge is detected at the input, the timer register value is copied to the CCP register. The count therefore corresponds to the period of the input signal. With a 1 MHz instruction clock, the count is in microseconds. An interrupt can also be generated on each active edge. In the main block of this program, timer 1 and the CCP mode are set up. The required interrupt is enabled, and the program waits for the CCP1 interrupt, indicating that the next rising edge has arrived. The CCP1 interrupt service routine clears the timer and interrupt, ready for the next capture event. The captured value is copied automatically into a variable called CCP1. Interrupts allow an external event to initiate a control sequence that takes priority over the current MCU activity. Typically, the interrupt service routine carries out some operation associated with the port or internal device that requested the interrupt. Interrupts are frequently used with hardware timers, which provide delays, timed intervals, and measurement. A time delay can be implemented using a simple software counting loop but this has the disadvantage of tying up the processor, while the delay executes. A more efficient technique, is to use a hardware timer running independently from the MCU clock. 
This allows accurate timing to be more easily achieved, and the timer can run concurrently with some other task. A timeout interrupt informs the MCU that the timer interval has expired, and the ISR can implement the required action. Thank you for watching, and please do not forget to support us, to keep the channel alive. If you don't like the video, please feel free, to write criticism in the commentary, so we can make progress.